Hi everybody, Matt Ruddick here with you again from the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Today we're going to be talking about one of the fastest growing aspects of the hobby, FPV drone racing. Now chances are you know somebody who's flown one of these FPV drones, or maybe you have even want to try one yourself. Well today I'm going to give you my top five tips on building your very first racing drone. Tip number one, choosing the right frame for you. Now it's easy to get overwhelmed by all the choices you can make when buying a frame. There are different sizes, shapes, configurations to look at, not to mention where the battery is going to mount. Well here are just a few examples out there. So this two inch frame from Detroit Multirotor might be good for someone who has a limited space to fly in. While these two five inch frames are some of the most popular on the market. Speaking of these five inch frames, you might notice that they aren't exactly created equal. This frame from Space One FPV is called a True X frame and will offer you a more neutral flying characteristic and tighter center of gravity. On the other hand, this stretched X frame from Horizon Hobby allows for a tighter roll axis and can help maneuver sharp turns more easily. The trick is to find out what works best for your style of flying. Tip number two, the test fit. Now it's pretty easy to go diving in on your first build trying to get it done as quickly as you can so you can get out in the air as quickly as you can. But it's usually a good practice to take a step back once you've got all your components together and do a test fit. Make sure that everything's going to fit on your frame the way you want it to be and make sure that you've got all the components that you need to go in your quad. For example, you've got to know where your ESCs are going to go and if you're going to have enough motor wire to reach them. You're going to want to make sure there's enough space between your PDB and your flight controller and to make sure that there's enough room between your flight controller and your top plate. Once you put everything together the first time, you won't have to go back and start readjusting things because it can be kind of a pain to go back and unsolder and resolder everything after the fact. Tip number three, tools. It's always been said that you should have the right tool for the job. That tried and true sentiment is one you should take to heart when building your quadcopter. One advantage we all have is that most manufacturers are using similar sized hardware in all of their kits. For example, you'll find the most motor manufacturers will use the same size hex screw for all of their motor mounts. What this means for you is that you can pick up a modest tool set from any of the many online shops or local hobby shops that are specifically designed for working on drones. Now I personally use this quad racer tool set from Horizon Hobby and it contains three hex drivers and two nut drivers and I've yet to need a size that isn't contained in this set. Now some of the other tools you're probably going to need is a hobby knife, wire cutters, electrical tape, double-sided tape, heat shrink tubing, and a good quality soldering iron. Tip number four, soldering. There's a reason why this tool in particular should be singled out. No matter what kit you decide on, you'll most definitely need to solder something along the way. Now, if you consider yourself somewhat of a soldering professional, then you'll likely be fine with your build. However, if you're not sure of the difference between a soldering iron and a nine iron, then this might be something worth paying attention to. Soldering is a skill that if done poorly, can cause your quadcopter to behave very inconsistently. You may find that your aircraft will fall out of the sky for no apparent reason, or you could find that your flight controller won't even boot up when you plug your battery in. It's even possible that if you shorted the wrong leads on your build, your whole quadcopter could go up in smoke. Now look, soldering isn't a scary thing, but it does take some practice. There are many soldering practice kits available on the market, and it's worth picking up one to hone your skills a little bit. Once you're ready to pick up your own soldering iron, make sure to get something that's good quality and temperature controlled like this unit I have here. And tip number five, motors, motors, and more motors. While you're shopping for motors for your project, it's gonna be real easy to get caught up in all the different brands, colors, and thrust ratings. However, there's one tip that's gonna get you out of a jam every single time. Once you decide on what motor is going to suit you the best, make sure you purchase an extra one to keep on hand in case of a failure. Crashing is going to be inevitable, and you'll be glad you had an extra motor on hand to make a quick field repair. Because remember, flying is still more fun than waiting on the big brown truck. So there you have it, my top five tips for building your first race drone. Now go out there, get to building, and once you're done, get to flying. We'll see you out on the track.